Hey guys, long time since I've done a video, but I want to give y'all a little update, and I've done a lot of work in the shop. I've been gone for a while, and I'm going to show you something real quick. Um, not very nice. It's raining. It's getting kind of dark. It's just on the verge of dark, but uh, take a look at this baby here. Y'all wonder why I ain't been doing any business. My wife had a semi go over in the left turning lane and then cut across the highway in front of her. She hit the landing gear of it in the side of the truck. Totaled out my little low mileage car. So she's uh, hurt. We're dealing with a lot of junk, but uh, she's out of the hospital now. I'm going to get over here in the shop. And we're going to go through some stuff. Y'all stay tuned here. All right, over here in the shop, we got Daniel working on stuff. Daniel and we got Kira over here working on stuff. So we've been doing a lot of changes. Now, I got my big piles out here. Let's make sure my screen size is right. Screen size is right. So um, we have moved the battery bank. Now, originally it was back in another room. So if you don't know anything about my channel, subscribe. You're going to see a lot. And go in there and look at things. So sitting in here is 14 batteries, big L16s, and sitting up here is a 5,000 watt, and for you guys who, we used to have a big mean well sitting up here, but it was extremely sensitive to the wind turbine, and um, oh yeah, and if this offends people, get over it. <laughs> um, it's, it's a comic thing. So... Um, this wiring setup right here has been durable for years. Each one of those banks going into 12 volt have their own uh, one watt cables running to them. And it's very strong, very powerful, a lot of uh, output. Now, what we've got here is we've got a brand new inverter, and it's big. It's huge. Look at the transformer that's on this thing. There's Kira's hand right there. So I'm going to put uh, get her Kira stand over there next to it so they'll have an idea of the size. Look at the size of that. Look at the size of that power inverter right there it's next huge. to her. It's huge. So it is heavy. This thing weighs about 65, 70 pounds. I don't know exact, but it's close. And we're going to be putting this one in because it has a 16 volt over volt versus the mean well's 15. So we're using the mean well now in a big RV and it's doing beautifully. Mean wells are impressive. Everything that I'm going to show you in these videos, guys, look below the video. If you have a cell phone, look below the video, and there's like a little down arrow. Hit that, and you'll see all the data information because there'll be links to these. Now, this here is from BNC. Now, this is the guys, I get the turbines from. You've seen that at the beginning of the video, the big purple, pretty thing up there, and that five blade up there. Those are beautiful, powerful turbines. Right now, with practically no sun, no nothing, and about a seven or eight mile an hour wind that gets them spinning. I am getting power to my battery bank. Hold on, let me go over here. So as you'll see, that that goes back and forth, and that's coming from the wind turbines because the solar is just, it's done, it's over. There's no solar. Now, in a seven mile an hour wind to get that little bit of amperage, that don't sound impressive to a lot of people. Was that 8.6? That's not impressive. You get nothing. Your battery banks won't live very long. So that's the whole point of having wind power. Now, this big inverter here, we're going to get in depth on it. Uh, I'll be doing another video. I had a couple people ask me about this. I don't know if they saw it or not, but this, uh, here, let me turn it off back on. This is an oscilloscope. It's really, really cool. And I've been using it for a long time, but I figured I'd give y'all guys a little bit of, a little bit of look on it. And of course you can change all the different scales and everything with it. And for you guys who don't seem to be offended by my, Swish your sweet fingers. Uh, I appreciate you. Otherwise, this nice fella over here is genuine. And he sent me a whole pack of Havana Classics, man. Look at that hand roll thing. How old is that? Oh, yeah. Beautiful. That, oh, yeah. It was at least $100 for the cigars. Oh, yeah. He loaded me down. So we got a big bag, and he is one hell of a guy. We have uh, viewers in every country that is trying to learn how to do this stuff, and I am trying to help people. Um, I love the idea of not, if you don't like what I put up, that's fine. But I love the idea of people being able to do this themselves because it would cost you thousands of dollars, man, to hire somebody to do this 
but if you can just kind of follow what I'm doing, build it your own way. Um, we have a, a guy over in Michigan that has done a beautiful job. And I'm going to put a link to his channel and his information down below the video. Also, look, look below all the parts things that I'll list and, and I'll start putting links to these guys. I want y'all to subscribe to them. I want y'all to pay attention because they find some new tricks, new ways to do it cheaper or better. Okay. Now up here. I'm glad you stayed long enough to see this part. Um, and if you didn't, well, you missed out, didn't you? This is a diversion load system. And this is uh, a design of mine. And this, of course, is the OPC Mason controller right here. So it's set at 14.55 volts. Now, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to put it through a test cycle. Now, you guys who want these and you want to build like this, if you want me to pre-build you something and ship it to you, let me post below it ain't free, it ain't cheap, and it ain't expensive. At least it's not expensive. So a lot cheaper than some of that crap you see. But you can you can put 40 wind turbines on one of these. So Because this will run about 50 of these SSRs. Now, now you get over here and look. I'm going to hit it to where it's going to go through a cycle. There's its max. There's reset. There's test. I let off test. And you're going to see them SSRs blinking. Okay, now an SSR works by a light signal, what's called a CDS cell, and the CDS cell, of course, operates a set of MOSFETs that turn on and off switching, so it's no physical contact point that's on there. So, if you heard that beep noise, that is my little cool, this is, guys, I want y'all check this out here, I'm going to turn it off back on. This is the coolest clamp, now it'll do AC and DC, self-select, and you'll see what it is. It is just cool. As of course, I just hit the freeze button on it. All the features it has on it, and it's dirt cheap. So, you know, for what it does, I mean, if you're going to go in there and buy something like real expensive $50 or $80 one, um, or some of them are way more expensive than that. And I'll put that there, and as soon as it picks up the signal of the DC current right there, there it starts reading the input from the wind turbines. Now, mind you, six to eight miles per hour, it's putting charge into my battery bank. So, let me get it on there better. There we go. And, like right now, 10 amps, 10.2, 9, 13 amps, 14 amps. So, this is coming from my batteries, or from my uh, wind turbines. Let's walk over there right quick. We got solar controllers now all going in over here. And you guys who have been watching my videos, thank you. Um... I'm sorry I've been gone for a while, but it used to be all of that in here, and we got rid of it, and the battery bank, of course, is now over there, but here is all the wind turbine stuff, but but it's all rigged up, so I'm getting actually quite a bit of power loss, most likely through this nest of crap, but I had to keep them connected. My wind seems to never stop here, and we're going to be putting uh, all that turbine controllers, right? Yep. We're going to be putting them. That's actually Karen Daniels. Job. They're going to be mounting all of that here on a sheet. They are over there painting now with a fireproof paint. You don't have to have it, but we use it. Just for safety, like she says, uh, they learn all that real important. So um, my system up here is 500 watts here, 60 amp, 40 amp. 300 watts of ohmite, 150 a piece, and then down here I have 100 watts each time, so we're running at, what are we running at here, 6, 8, I think it's like 800 watts total here, so 1300 watts of diversion, so I have 1300 watts, which is the equivalent of about 95 amps, I can knock 95 amps out of my system with a quickness, now this thing here, this meter, you guys might want these, because if you have a problem with turbine solar you can just walk up there and boom find out if it's still working so like look at that on the negative boom right there 17 amps coming out of my wind turbines coming my way right now 21 amps 23 amps because there is no solar it is quite dark as you seen um, I have let's see what I got point one nothing nothing see no arrows all right so we have no solar power coming in. Everything you see is wind power. This big monster inverter, I, left, I opened it up to show you guys what it looks like. 
and why a transformer style low frequency is the best thing you can buy. This one here has the ability, it plugs into your regular house current or generator. It can handle up to 12 hertz offset, so it can literally handle a, a rough generator, but not a crappy one, okay? Not an old Coleman, but you can take like a, a Harbor Freight generator. You can take a Champion, you can take a Honda, a Yamaha, a Yamaha or whatever they are, and it's fine. Just make sure that you put a 20 amp breaker coming to it. Now, it doesn't cycle through like that, but it sends this power at 75 amps charger, and that's that. It's actually inside here. The charger is actually inside here. It's not the transformer. It sends that back to your battery bank from a power source. Over here, it has 27 amps, and those three right there, see that? Your ground, your line, your neutral, 27 amps. So you'll use you just a 30 amp disconnect or a pair of 15 amp switches and run your power. Now see, we already have that here. We have to have this over here to run the lights in the shop. That's a little 14 gauge, because we're kind of stressing it a little bit. Um, probably be better with a 12, but that's the one we had available. And that is the setup going on. So you guys, there's gonna be more videos. We're gonna get that mounted. We're gonna show you how it was mounted. We're gonna get the wind turbines moved. And the upcoming video is load reactive switches. Another video to follow directly after that. This is a 750 watt turbine. We're going to show you a turbine. Yeah, it's a really big box. It is a big box. See, Kira Marie, it's a big box. So, um, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to open up the box, right? Yep. And we're going to show you guys exactly what you can get from a company out of Virginia. Now, it took me a while to get one of these, but I'm going to start installing them on some of our job sites. Because one of the customers who got one, he convinced me. And once I'm a believer of this, we're going to go further. So Daniel's setting up right now. And this is the size of this generator. It is honking big. Oh, yeah, it's huge. And it's, it's got good it. heavy wiring on it. I do like that. And it don't cog at all, really, does it? No, it don't. Uh -uh. So that's going to be nice. So, yeah, I like that. Little, you can feel that heavy magnet power in it, too. So the, the turbine itself, we're going to install it. We're going to give you good reviews, bad reviews. If it's crap, you know me, guys. I'm going to call it crap. If it's good, I'm going to call it good. So take a look here how big that is versus these two. That's a big thing right there. That is huge, honking big. Let's get this other half out right quick. This is a product from a guy that's been in this business apparently for like a couple of decades. And you have all the parts relative. This unit here mounts on an inch and a half pipe, but you'll take basically a four foot or five foot piece of inch and a half that'll go up in here and mount. And then you'll have your... Uh, your roller bearings, there'd be a, a um, oh, hell, what they call that, a uh, a flat bearing that goes on it. I'll have to show you here in a little bit. But there's another one that goes up top, and then you use clamping uh, rings on it, and should be a lot of that hardware in here. Uh, this is a kit, so it's an impressive freaking kit. Um, one of the things that I like immediately is that every one of these blades are weighed. Every one of them are weighed. Back here is the tail. Now, this one's unique. When you see this kind of a turbine, you know that a lot of effort went into it to keep the chatter down. The wind chatter is when a turbine's just doing that. And this design prevents that. It actually allows a tunnel of air to go below and above. And this bolts to the tail here. This is the tail frame. And look at that beautiful pipe. Look at that design. It's got the hurricane wind or hurricane generator symbol on the top of it right there. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So you have her hold it up there. Hold it up there, Marie. See how big that thing is? Now, this is a 750-watt turbine. But the three that we installed, a guy bought them and had them delivered, and he said, I'll get you one. I'll find a way to get you one. And we got one. So I was kind of a critic of these at one point. But I can tell you right now from what I'm seeing, 
that was a little bit of a problem that I should have cleared up. This is not something to be critical about. So let me open up the hardware bag and we're going to see what comes with it. Um, you do need, because it produces so much power, and below the video, a link to these. Every one of these parts is Moflon, number one, fully 10, all copper. This handles the power, but you have to do this in such a way we're going to show you in the next video related to this. There's going to be a follow-up video testing, powering it up, and installing this in a third video because there's so much. I don't want to put you on a 45-minute video to watch here. Oh, no. So we're going to do that, and you guys are going to get to see how this hurricane wind power turbine produces. And I have seen the results outside of Cortez, Colorado for two of them. And man, I needed five of these years ago. So let's get Daniel to open this up. We're going to give you an idea of what the hardware is inside of it. Okay, now we got the bag open and we got all the parts out. Bolts for the tail fins. Yaw bearing. That's what I was trying to think about when I was talking about the pivot points for this. So you have yaw bearings and then you have locking collars that go top and bottom. Now I suggest you use a red fifth wheel grease. That's what we learned um, on this. You can get little packets at truck stops, like a buck and a half. You throw them up on your fifth wheel. You know, you throw a little bag on there, then you pull onto it for a semi truck and it splatters. That red fifth wheel grease will stick and keep this thing on, tar on target for decades, man. It's really tough stuff. Now, you have the slip ring. You have the rectifier. Now, who in the hell provides that? I don't know anybody does. He does. Um, and then, of course, you have your uh, bolts for your hub and nose cone. So that nose cone has a retainer bolt that goes into it into the center right there. That's, that's how they're supposed to be made. So I've seen a lot of nose cones fall off. But anybody says you don't need a nose cone, well, they're a moron. But this does need a nose cone because you don't get the eddy winds in the center of the blades. One of the cool things here, guys, and I know my video's long. Uh, one of the cool things is that these are in X6. That is the plastics that they're made with is nylon six. So that stuff has got a 45 to 50 year outdoor survival rate. You can look it up. That I like. I'm so damn glad that's what I got instead of that Gouda cheese crap I got from High Energy years ago. Yeah, it, it actually looks like cheese. Yeah, it does. And them, them things there, you could probably drive over them with your freaking truck. Now, we're going to be putting it together. An upcoming video soon. We will be showing you about a lot of our mess here. How we got the solar started in here. And especially for you guys that didn't click off that system and all the stuff that goes with it. And I have a viewer in Austria. I hope you're watching. Got your box made. There's your controller. There's your lugs. There's your two SSRs. There's your two heat sinks and a few little tiny things heading your way. So anybody else? Y'all need help on this, man, ask. I just love to see you do it yourself. All right, y'all be good.